Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, inaugurated today Jury Arabia 2017, in which over 600 exhibitors from 30 countries are participating. His Royal Highness affirmed that the development of any industry requires stability and security, and the government has stabilised the security situation and directed its efforts to development. He added that the exhibition has become a milestone for its long history in the region, which extends over four centuries and continues to attract more companies each year. He stated that despite the world's political and economic challenges, the Kingdom is making a steady progress towards development. His Royal Highness toured the exhibition, viewing its highlights and expressing admiration for its various exhibits. He asserted that the investment environment in the Kingdom is witnessing a continuous development through the procedures that are aimed at achieving comprehensive economic and social development that encourages the vitality of the national economy. The Prime Minister noted that flexibility and economic openness in the Kingdom enhance Bahrain status as an investment attracting environment. His Royal Highness stressed the government's keenness on reviewing and developing the legal system and the regulations that govern the investment process, making them more flexible, and that it coincides with establishing many development projects aimed at developing infrastructure. He emphasised that the exhibition, as a result of the organisers, is to act to consolidate the status as one of the most important exhibitions internationally and regionally in the gold, jewellery and industry. He added that the gold and jewellery industry represents an essential part of Bahraini heritage, expressing pride in the reputation of Bahraini gold jewellery in the region. He affirmed that the industries produced by highly trained and efficient Bahrainis represent the beginning of a future of industrial development. He noted the government's support to the exhibition and conferences sector and providing all the facilities that contribute to boosting the national economy. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the exhibition organisers and participants for the efforts that resulted in its success. For his part, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Saeed bin Rashid Al Zayani, expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness for patronising the event, asserting that it reflects His Royal Highness and the government's keenness on attracting various specialised international exhibitions. He noted that the exhibition's industry and business tourism has become an economic development pillar. He affirmed the jewellery sector represents a national priority in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism strategy.
vibrant platform for exhibitors to showcase their latest projects in the dynamic Middle East markets. This well-established exhibition offers consumers and trade visitors alike a once-a-year opportunity to browse the largest selection of jewelry and watches in the Middle East, stay abreast of trends, discover new designers and source one-off pieces in a unique atmosphere. Jewelry Arabia is, is always the same. It's, uh, the, the difference is sometimes you see new companies participate with uh, some local agent, but in terms of space, it's, uh, it's always the same people, same exhibitor. They uh, make sure their space is reserved for the next year. And uh, if I do have a more, uh, I have a, w a big waiting list, I can tell you. About 15% waiting list. Uh, and you're talking about a 20,000 square meter. Uh, this show. So I could fill another 3,000 square meters. Hopefully with the new announcement today of signing the agreement for the new exhibition center in 2019 we will have the biggest jewelry Arabia. So I look forward to uh, fill all these waiting list exhibitors into uh, 2019 and make the biggest jewelry Arabia ever will be in the history. World famous watch and jewelry houses are making a return appearance at the exhibition, many of them using the event as a platform to introduce exclusive collections and limited edition pieces. We are participating right here with the third years in the Jewelry Arabia in 2017. We have been right here since 2015. And every year we are participating with our exclusive creation, which has been done in our home at Paris, in the Palace Vendôme. Uh, proudly this year we have got a new line of production that has been shown right here for the first time. It's going to be like an exclusive creation. It's called Sir Bon Bohem. And it's uh, coming for the first time in Bahrain and even for all the Gulf region. And nobody having it, even in Paris. The German Pearl Testing Laboratory of Bahrain has been participating here at the show for many, many years. Uh, and so they have a lot of experience with the show, but the participation was much smaller than, than our president Danat has here right now. Um, uh, Danat um, is really looking forward to um, a really good show. Uh, We're offering um, complimentary uh, uh, co consultations on anything that people think they want to have questions about, uh, gems and jewelry. Um, it would be our pleasure to sit down with them and, and help them in any way we can. This year we, we started a new collection. It's the first time that uh, Kohaji starts uh, such a collection. Uh, it's called Fajr Collection. Uh, it's a wide range of uh, jewelry that starts from uh, small items and goes up to uh, bridal uh, pieces. Uh, and as always, we, we are particip participating in the exhibition in uh, two halls, Hall 1 and Hall 2, we have two stands. Uh, and uh, we invite uh, people to see our new collection, which is Fajr, and it's in Hall 1 now. Uh, we have the full range in, in the exhibition, uh, and uh, we are proud to start such, such a collection because Fajr uh, stands for a new beginning for Kohaji, so we hope that uh, this beginning uh, will be uh, as uh, bright as Fajr. Jewelry Arabia 2017 will go on until the 25th of November here at Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sport Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation, the BMMAF, and founder of the KHK organisation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa launched today at a press conference His Highness's boxing team, which is to be part of his plan to advance combat sports. Present were the CEO of KHK MMA, Mohammed Shahid, the manager of the KHK boxing team, Fabian bin Nasser, and a number of representatives from national and foreign media agencies. The team's first participation in the African Boxing Championship was announced during the conference, which is to be held in Cape Verde on the 9th of December. Boxer Faisal Arami will face Congolese boxer Junior Maximus as both boxers will compete over the championship's heavyweight title. Sheikh Khalid noted that supporting boxing comes in light of the kingdom's success in mixed martial arts sports. He recalled Bahrain's historical achievement of winning second place in the overall ranking. He added that local competitions would be launched to promote boxing and support the Bahraini youth who wish to participate in the sport. His Highness stated that his aspiration is for Bahrain to be one of the leading countries in this sport. He also wished boxer Faisal Arami success in his match. 
KHK CEO noted that Sheikh Khalid has set a long-term strategy to advance this support, affirming that the KHK organisation will continue its efforts to develop both boxing and mixed martial arts. For his part, Banasa expressed pleasure in the launch of the Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa's boxing team. Boxer Faisal Rami also expressed pleasure for representing the KHK team in the Kingdom and the African Boxing Championship. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his continuous support. Under the patronage of the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the 12th Professional Conference and Exhibition of the American Society of Safety Engineers Middle East Chapter was held today. The event was attended by His Highness Prince Faisal bin Abdulaziz bin Nasser Al Saud, the Minister of Oil Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labour and Social Development Jamil bin Mohammed Al Maidin, the Deputy Minister of Interior. Sheikh Talal bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Central Governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, and the President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. The event is considered as one of the leading conferences that tackle safety, environment, and occupational health in the oil, gas, and petrochemical industry in the region. The Interior Minister expressed appreciation to the organisers of the conference and their ongoing commitment to hold it in Bahrain. He said that the Interior Ministry has been keen on continuing cooperation and coordination with the American Society of Safety Engineers since the fifth conference held in February 2000. He also thanked the attendees and companies for their contributions to the exhibition that is being held on the sideline of the conference to showcase general safety related products and services. He said that safety covers various fields including risk management, especially the protection of oil establishments as targeting them could cause major danger to the safety of individuals as well as to the public and private property. He highlighted that this swift response and capabilities of specialised authorities in dealing with the iran back terrorist act of blasting an oil pipeline in Bari prevented losses. His Royal Highness emphasised that it is important to take measures and allocate all capabilities to protect oil establishments due to their sensitive nature. The Interior Minister asserted that Bahrain has been per periodically selected to host the conference and its dedication to general safety to protect lives and resources, which are a top priority of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Minister added that the government is keen on maintaining safety in all its programmes and projects. He honoured the organisers of the event and toured the exhibition, which includes the participation of various directorates in the Interior Ministry. During his tour, the Interior Ministry was briefed on the latest safety technologies. The event attracts more than 600 participants and will be held through 30 sessions and 15 workshops. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Deputy Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa to attend a reception ceremony hosted yesterday by their Omani Ambassador to Bahrain, Abdullah bin Rashid Al Mildiri, marking Oman's 47th National Day. Senior officials, members of the diplomatic corps, accredited to Bahrain and invitees also attended the celebration. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and the Southern Governor conveyed greetings of His Royal Highness the Premier to the Omani leadership and people, as well as its best wishes of more progress and prosperity to Oman under the leadership of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said. They underlined deep-rooted fraternal relations between both countries and peoples, 
and a distinction in various fields. The Omani ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness to further cement ties between the two brotherly countries, expressing hope that the next period would witness more cooperation to achieve the aspirations of both countries and peoples. Government officials today held a coordination meeting focused on sustainable economic development and strengthening the Kingdom's long-term fiscal security. The meeting follows the 2017 Government Forum, during which His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed government officials to lead a series of workshops to identify key objectives for the upcoming Government Action Plan 2019-2022. The 2017 Government Forum was held in October under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and through the initiative of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The forum outlined the Government's progress in implementing initiatives and programmes within the current Government Action Plan 2015-2018. Commenting on the outcomes of today's meeting, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Matawa, highlighted that under the directives of His Majesty, King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, citizens remain at the heart of development efforts. He went on to stress the integral role that the Prime Minister and the Crown Prince play in driving forward sustainable development. During the meeting, officials reviewed recommendations relating to key economic sectors that have been submitted by a number of government ministries and departments. Government officials also discussed regulatory policies that underpin the Kingdom's diversification efforts by regulating public expenditure and increasing revenues. In addition, a series of substantial government-funded development projects were outlined, with an emphasis on the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness that underpin Bahrain's Vision 2030, as well as the underlying goals of the upcoming Government Action Plan 2019-2022. The final outcomes will be handed over to the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and Rationalising Expenditure for approval. Following the Committee's approval, the final outcomes will be discussed at the first workshop, which is anticipated to take place next week. Under the patronage of the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Hamaydan, the Bahrain Sociologists Association organised today the 11th Gulf Social Societies and Associations Forum, termed Addressing the Phenomenon of Domestic Violence in the GCC Countries. The meeting was attended by the Governor of the Northern Government, Ali Abdul Hussein Al Asfour, Director General of the Executive Council of the GCC Council, the Ministers of Labour and Social Affairs, Dr. Mir Mohammed Al Haraji, President of the Gulf Society for Sociologists, Khalif Ahmed Al Asfour, President of the Bahraini Society for Sociologists, Hamid Musun Ahmed, and with the participation of a number of officials and specialists in family guidance and civil society, organisations of the Kingdom of Bahrain, along with the GCC countries. The Minister of Labour and Social Development stressed the need to develop and identify safe and positive measures that enable the victim of domestic violence to report and seek assistance in a secure manner so that he or she will not be harmed by the partner or society. The forum, which will last for three consecutive days, aims to shed light on the phenomenon of domestic violence, its effects and means of prevention. It will identify the roles of relevant government institutions and NGOs at the local and Gulf levels. Following the order of the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to distribute 
4,800 housing units to beneficiaries in all governance. The Housing Ministry continues the allocation of the units at a Lowsbury housing project, implemented by the Ministry in cooperation with the private sector. Housing Ministry's Under Secretary, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, said the Lowsbury project is a major step forward towards consolidating and activating the partnership mechanisms with the private sector. He continued to state that his aiming projects currently carried out by the Housing Ministry within the 25,000 unit programme included in the Government Action Plan and emerging from His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's efforts to build 40,000 units. The Under Secretary asserted that the project confirms the success of the Government's policy to enhance the partnership with the private sector as one of the means to address the housing issue in the Kingdom. He added that the distribution process was co conducted in an organised way which satisfied the beneficiaries, noting the distribution procedures completed by the end of next week. The Representatives Council held today its eighth session under the chairmanship of the Council's first Deputy Speaker, Ali Abdullah al -Aradi. The Council approved a draft law of the protocol amending the agreement between the governments of Bahrain and the Philippines concerning the avoidance of double taxation and prevention of fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income. The Council referred the draft law to the Shura Council. The Council also approved two proposals as well as a referral to the Government. The first proposal amends Article 327 of the Civil and Commercial Procedures Law declared by Decree Law 12 of the year 1971. The second proposal amends Article 2 of Law 58 of the year 2006 on the protection of society against terrorist acts. You're watching the business news in Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abdul Ghafoor. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,263.64 points, marking a decrease of 2.38 points below the previous closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks, insurance and hotels and tourism sectors, and investors mainly traded in the investment sector, representing 49% of the total value of traded shares. 77 equity transactions took place, including 1,596,602 shares, worth 268,864 Bahraini dinars. Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Abdul Hussein Mirza has received Caspian Balustra Group CEO Marty Sufiani and Regional Director Al Hakam Al Talib. The minister was briefed on the steps of the group is taking to expand its presence and investment in solar energy projects in Bahrain. The company is one of the contributors in the implementation of the first solar power project in the kingdom. The minister said that focus on renewable energy has become necessary the global trends in the field, especially in view of the wise leadership's keenness to promote the use of clean energy for comprehensive, sustainable development. Under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, Bahrain announces its first international hospitality and restaurant expo, scheduled to take place from the 21st to the 24th of March 2018 at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. The most anticipated expo is expected to boost creativity and growth in the hospitality and restaurant sector, which serves as one of the promising sectors that is expected to witness significant growth and will contribute to the national economy and thus aid the diversification strategy followed by the wise government. It's a great chance to create an ecosystem within the kingdom for visitors, investors and business owners to meet, create lucrative linkages and partner for mutually beneficial goals. 
A culinary competition will also be held among the activities of the Expo to attract emerging players of the hospitality industry in the DCC area to allow visitors to truly understand the flavors, culture and creativity of Bahrain. We felt that there is uh, a need in the market for that kind of uh, uh, event where uh, it brings people together from, from different parts of the world and from Bahrain especially, where the Bahrainis can definitely learn from the international uh, experience in this sector. Uh, I know that this year a lot of the uh, companies that are uh, importing food and in the food sector will be attending, so it's not just the uh, hospitality sector and restaurants, but even uh, companies that provide um, the food and, 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 and fruits and, and all of the ingredients that go into that as well. We would like to have Bahrain recognized as one of the destinations on the radar for an exhibition for this kind of a trade and, and industry uh, because it's very promis promising and uh, it's, it's, it withholds a, a lot of potential, the FMB industry and hospitality as well. We will bring here chefs from all the areas that will compete in the three days of the Expo and will be judged by Michelin star chefs coming on those days. So the idea is to do something that is half the entertainment and half education because today competition is a way of educating the, the public and also the professionals. We've seen more change in the culinary scene here in Bari in the last 10 years than probably in the previous 100 and I believe that we are moving to the world stage and this is one of those events that puts the spotlight on Bahrain and lets everyone know that this is exactly the direction that we're going.